Welcome to another day in the Matrix. This is Waters Above. I hope you're all doing well during these chaotic times. Hopefully you made it through the solar eclipse in one piece. But all jokes aside, the events that have been unfolding on the world stage have really been ramping up lately, so we have a lot to cover today. And if you've been following along with my videos over the past couple months, then you expected everything that's occurred over this past week, specifically the week starting off with the total solar eclipse on April 8th into the key date of April 15th that I've been talking about for a while now. So in today's video, I'll be recapping these key events that have occurred and decoding the symbolism behind them to expose the deeper meanings of what's going on here and what to expect next, not only for the markets, but for the world stage as a whole. And what I'm about to share might be one of the most important videos I've ever released, and I don't say that to exaggerate. Anyone who supports my art knows I'm not one to sensationalize, but what we're about to get into today will be very revealing and a prime example of what we're about here at Waters Above. So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with gamatria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. Feel free to subscribe and turn on the bell notification to stay updated on when new videos come out. And make sure to give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious beings to help grow our community. And with that being said, let's take the clear pill. So as I mentioned moments ago, for those that have been following my work lately, you'll know that I've been regularly putting an emphasis on the week of April 8th through 15th this year to expect both a war ritual as well as an unexpected fire ritual. And I use that word ritual intentionally. Now, the events that have just occurred on the world stage speak for themselves. And what I've pulled up on the screen is a slide from a presentation that I shared back on February 1st this year titled Year of the Dragon Decoded, compiling all my research and analysis for the year ahead. And this particular piece of information about April 15, 2024 is something that I've been talking about for a couple of years now, since 2022 is when I first started sharing it on interviews that I was asked to be on, podcasts, etc., and throughout 2022 and into 2023, I continue to share my thoughts about the year of 2024 and my outlook for this year of the dragon, what I'm calling the year of the X, which I'll get into later. And I received so many requests to compile these decodes into one comprehensive presentation. And that's exactly what this year of the dragon decoded was. So now that this key date of April 15th has come and gone yesterday, I decided to go back to this video that I shared and review the slide where I discussed my thoughts on the week of the solar eclipse on April 8th. And here's exactly what I wrote at the 22 minute mark. I mentioned, I feel this April 8th solar eclipse will be ritualized, not on the exact date of the eclipse, but the following week on April 15th. And to think of this esoterically like a pulse of energy or like a ripple effect. And the ritual is likely to be one of these three scenarios. One, an event tied to the current war narrative. Two, this which I will not say, and three, a fire ritual slash bombing. Then I mentioned either tied into this war or an isolated fire ritual like the Notre Dame fire that happened on April 15th, 2019. This slide included a picture of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris on the day of the fire. And as you just heard a moment ago, I even specifically mentioned an isolated fire ritual like the Notre Dame fire that happened on April 15, 2019. And here we have it. This historic Copenhagen stock exchange goes up in flames. This is very fascinating that we have this particular event happening at this exact time. And Every single article you pull up regarding this event that just happened mentions the Notre Dame Cathedral. And as you can see here, it says, this is our Notre Dame, our own Notre Dame moment. Now, here, here's how we know that this is all scripted. This spire that's on fire here in this picture is called a dragon spire. It's the tale of four 
entwined dragons, giving the spire its unique aesthetic. And if you go to this article over here on the BBC, you'll actually see this. National Museum photographer Roberto captured one of the dragons at the foot of the spire last Friday, right before this fire ritual. So this was a dragon year ritual. And I exposed all of this during the Year of the Dragon Decoded. So here we are. This was a Dragon Year ritual with fire symbolism. It's how I was able to determine that we would have a fire ritual specifically. And there's a lot that I'm about to bring up coming back to this decode that I shared a couple months ago. But as you know, dragon breathes fire. That's the symbolism. This is also tying in the mythology of the eclipse and the deeper meaning and esoteric meaning behind the eclipse as the ancient Chinese believed a solar eclipse was the dragon swallowing the sun. So fire is for purification, essentially removing the old to bring in the new. And you've all heard of this term phoenix rising from the ashes, burning purification ritual. And the fact that this was a stock exchange building is an incredibly symbolic story that's being told here. And remember, I said two statements leading up to this week that I was very clear on in past videos. One is that an event will not happen on the exact day of the solar eclipse and that to expect these specific events to happen slightly after the solar eclipse, even here in this decode that I shared for my Patreons, Patreon supporters, you'll see I brought up the following week on April 15th. Now, the second key statement that I brought up many times in past videos is that the event for this April 15th ritual will not be anything like 9-11 or like when C-19 was being declared a pandemic. It wouldn't be that big. I was very clear on that. Because of all the events that have happened in the past on this specific date, it was never anything that big on the event itself, such as the Boston Marathon bombing, this Notre Dame fire, the sinking of the Titanic, to just name a few popular examples. And these events were all symbolic, but nothing too extreme. And to keep your focus on the symbolism of whatever event happened, because just like the sinking of the Titanic didn't have an immediate effect on the world stage, well, a year later was the launch of the Federal Reserve System. And that did change the world as we know it. Some of you might be aware that on the Titanic, allegedly, there was some very powerful, influential rich men that were ritualized in that because they essentially were against the Federal Reserve System. So they go bye-bye, and what gets launched is the thing that they didn't want. So Team Zion always wins. But getting back to this, from the day of the sinking of the Titanic to the launch of the Federal Reserve System took almost two years, okay? But it had symbolism behind it, and that's what we were anticipating for this April 15th this year. And one final thing to mention about this, I ex and to actually expose how synchronized this all is, if you remember in the last couple of videos I put out mentioning the World War II timeline and the significance of that, because around this time of April in 1940, we had not only was 1940 World War II, it was the year of the dragon, but we also had all the same lunar and solar eclipses landing on the same days, and we also have the Hebrew calendar synchronized with the Gregorian calendar, which is incredibly rare. Well, the first event that happened after the solar eclipse in April of 1940 was the National Socialists invading Denmark. And this year we have this fire ritual in Denmark of their stock exchange building, a 400-year-old building, very important for their culture. And they're calling it their Notre Dame moment. You cannot be more synchronized than that. The dragon spire of this Copenhagen stock exchange goes up in flames. And we're gonna show you all the gematria tied to this as well. Flames giving you this 24, or in the year of 24, in the year of the X, 24th letter. Fire giving you this 38 esoterically that's three eights eight 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 three times eight is 24 the mirror of 24 is 42 you always mirror you never mimic denmark equals 
42, reverse reduction. This fire ritual that just happened in Co Copenhagen, Denmark, is tied to the Notre Dame fire five years ago in Paris, France, which will be where this year's Summer Olympics Games is hosted. This symbolism is also something that I was talking about for the past couple years, and I decoded it thoroughly in the same Year of the Dragon decoded presentation around the 18 minute mark, if I remember. So let me go right there, and you'll see this symbol, all right? So this is the symbolism that I was talking about with the number 24 and the symbol of Jupiter. Well, we'll have this Summer Olympics in France, and France is giving you the 24 in Chaldean. I wasn't playing games when I told you that this number 24 and 42 will be everywhere during this year. It's all tied back to Jupiter, which we are still in the Piscean Age ruled by Jupiter. Keep that in mind. Look at how this Summer Olympics that'll be coming up is the 33rd Summer Olymp... Well, the 33rd Olympiad. 33 is the master number of transmutation. Very important. So I expect this to be heavily ritualized, this particular Summer Olympics. Remember what I shared in prior videos about the Munich massacre that happened in the early 1970s during the Olympics, and that had to deal with Israel and Palestine. It's a mirror event. So this Olympics will be ritualized as well, most likely tied to terrorism and tied to this war narrative. Well, the fact that it's the 33 uh, Olympic Games, that's big, master number of transmutation. But I want to show you this, these Roman numerals. If I was to put them in a gematria calculator, obviously I know they add up to, 30, to 33, but when you put them into a gematria calculator, you're going to see something very fascinating here which is this synchronism with 99, 45, and 36. And these are all the same numbers that we get with Jupiter, 99, 45, and 36. And they literally used the symbol of Jupiter in this promotion of the Summer Games, Summer Olympic Games. Now, you can see this current logo that's going on is the flame. It's fire symbolism. We just had this fire of this Copenhagen stock, stock Exchange building, and we'll have many more. And there was already some other fire rituals prior to this. But the fact that this happened around and essentially on April 15th, considering if you were in Pacific time, it would have still been April 15th when the stock exchange burned, but that's not as important. What matters most is the symbolism here. And what they're telling us, that's the story. So we have this fire right here. We know an exoteric symbol of the Olympics is the torch. France gifted the Statue of Liberty to the USA. It holds the torch. That's Themis or Lady Justice. That's a Libertas. And as I showed you in my last video, the Civil War movie that came out on April 12th, right after the Great American Eclipse, which by the way, the following day we had this Iran drone attack in Israel. So we had this movie come out and the promotional poster of that Civil War movie had the Statue of Liberty on it, the Statue of Liberty's torch. This is all symbolic along with the fire that just happened in Copenhagen. Now, another important concept I brought up in my Year of the Dragon decode was to expect a key war-related event to happen after that solar eclipse on April 8th. I brought it up right here. To expect an event tied to the current war narrative exactly around this week, or during this week of April 8th through April 15th, excuse me. And I'm sure some of you are aware, on April 13th, I ran drone strike attack on Israel. This immediately triggered a liquidation event in the crypto market. And remember the key numbers for this year, 24 and 42. And we have Iran giving you this 42, 24. We have war, 42. We're in the Hebrew year of 5,784, the 24. Again, Iran. This is big. And this specific event was the biggest development in this ongoing war since it started back in October 2023, right around the last solar eclipse that we had. Coincidence? 
And in response to this event, a couple days later on April 15th, there was pro-Palestinian uh, protest, pro-Palestine protests throughout the USA and perhaps other places. But what really hit the press was these protests at Chicago O'Hare Airport, the Brooklyn Bridge in New York, and the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And that gold concept is big because I also brought that up in my Year of the Dragon Decoded and how it is likely that gold will actually hit $2,400 per ounce during this year of the dragon. And it's amazing that it literally hit that price leading up to this exact date. <laughs> April 12th, we smacked on 2,400. A couple of days ago, we, we hit 2,400 per ounce USD. You can't make this up. This was all coded in. We're in the year of the dragon. Dragon is tied to sun symbolism. Sun tied to gold. Gold would be bullish. And if you look at when we started this bullish move, it was effectively around the last solar eclipse. We dipped into it and we've been bullish since. And lately it's really heated up. So another call that we had on this particular asset, and I barely even talk about precious metals, but I want to remind people it's not to flex or to say I was right. It's because I want you to see the value behind this esoteric code. That's all that matters to me is spreading the awareness of this code so that you could apply it to what interests you and hopefully you can prosper from it or protect yourself from the coming changes on the world stage, all of which are important at these times. So getting back to this San Francisco connection and the gold miners and everything tied to that, the Golden Gate Bridge protest, it's just interesting because on April 15th, that's the anniversary of when San Francisco was incorporated back in 1850, just the year after the 49 year, which is where the San Francisco 49ers get their name from. And coincidentally, XRP is trading at 49 cents right now. But anyways, getting back to the symbolism from the last Super Bowl, the San Francisco 49ers just lost that recent Super Bowl against the Chiefs. And remember, they also lost the Super Bowl against the Chiefs right before the start of the C-19 pandemic. So they just lost again in that rematch on February 11th, 2024. And if you take from February 11th, 2024, again, the day of the last Super Bowl, and you tie it to this event that just happened, you're going to see that it is two months and four days apart. 2-4, right back to our key number, tied back to San Francisco. Also remember, Super Bowl 58 was on February 11th, making it the 42nd day of the year, the mirror of 24. And if we go into the Gamatria, we'll also show you San Francisco is 42 in Chaldean. Kansas City is the name of the team that won the recent Super Bowl and well the city of which they're based in and Kansas City equals 24 and just days after the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl there was a mass shooting at their Super Bowl parade in Kansas City Missouri and Missouri the state that the city is in also adds up to 42 and this was on Valentine's Day Cupid shoots arrows and with all these 24 and 42 rituals it's making me think about this upcoming date of april 24th so i would like you guys to take note of this i think it's very important we're going to break that down not only because in the gregorian system it's the 424 date or 4224 palindrome but when we connect it to march 13th this is where we're going to tie it back in cryptocurrency it is 42 days from March 13th, which is technically the day of Bitcoin's current all-time high. So we have 42 days in between the 424 day and the 224 year. You can't have more 42s and 24s than that, all right? And I'm not just pulling out any random day. This is the day of Bitcoin's current all-time high. And what's fascinating about this is Bitcoin actually closed a daily candle at 73,000, 73K on the 73rd day of this year and it is the only daily candle close bitcoin has at 73k this code is undeniable again this is not about being right or wrong it's about exposing how this actually works 
what are the machinations of what's making the markets do what it does? Gamatria, numerology, and astrology run the market, not narratives, not news. So keep this 424 date in mind. I think it could be very, very important, especially since April 24th is the day of our upcoming full moon. Let me just show you that really quickly. We have right there. And that's important for investors since full moons tend to be around our micro cycle lows. This date could very well be a, a solid buying opportunity in the crypto market. And effectively, any more dips in between now and then um, are opportunities. I myself have even started to make some new investments since many top altcoins have corrected 30 to 50% from their current microcycle tops. And if you want live updates and to be notified whenever I'm personally buying or selling my investments, that is one of the perks that's included with my mastermind community membership over at patreon.com slash waters above. And this membership also includes a weekly podcast where I give my outlook for the week ahead and review about four to five different altcoins each week that our community votes on. So we have a lot of involvement over there in our community. We even have a discord server that is included with the membership as well. And we're doing something very special, as you can see. You'll get full access to my decode presentations like that year of the dragon decoded that I've been showing you. You could see it is packed with value. Just this one slide alone released months in advance was showing you exactly how this time frame would go in the exact week and the exact events that should be happening. I even brought up how the stock market is likely to top out in late March into early April followed by a pullback throughout April and May. And look at the stock market right now. It's wild to see how the S&P is behaving. We literally hit perfectly the highest weekly close on March 25th, late March, and we have been closing red candles since, and this week looks no different. So I brought this up a very long time ago. And I also mentioned that we usually bottom out by late May into June, and that's the lowest we typically go for the remainder of the year. For this dip, I'd put emphasis on the May full moon around May 23rd as a key pivot time frame. So keep that in mind. Meaning we can actually see this continuation to the downside in the markets until about mid-May and then start to bottom out around the full moon in May and bounce from there with a bullish recovery throughout July into August, effectively making this the most ideal mid-cycle buying opportunity for the rest of the year. Now, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, it's important we stay present and focus on the immediate short term because we have a full moon coming up soon this month, which is exactly a week out from today on April 24th, and today is April 17th, the day I'm filming this video. I want you to consider that this full moon that's coming up will be in Scorpio. This will be bringing up the dark energy, a very emotional time. So Mars rules Scorpio in the traditional sense, Mars the god of war, so expect conflict. In a modern application, one would consider Pluto as the sign ruler of Scorpio, and Pluto is the god of true wealth, whilst Mercury being the god of artificial wealth, and I'll get to that in a moment, but Pluto being the god of true wealth and as the king of the underworld, this is also tied to darkness or the shadow. But remember, the wisdom behind Pluto or Hades is that all life comes from the darkness as the seed is in the soil and breathes life and the child develops in the mother's womb. All life or all light comes from the darkness. And by the way, for those who are interested in learning more about decoding and specifically decoding finance or decoding crypto, I'm actually working on a new project titled the Crypto Decoding Blueprint, which I plan to release very soon. And I'll be adding it to the masterclass within my recent full length course that I just came out with called the Decoding Mastermind that's available at watersabove.com. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more of how to decode specifically crypto. This will give you some time in the meantime to join this course and 
work on some of the fundamentals because it has two full masterclasses already loaded into that course, the Perception Mastery and Duality Masterclasses. Just those two alone will build an incredibly solid foundation, and by completing just those two modules, you'll already be an intermediate level decoder. And the Decoding Mastermind course, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access, so by joining today, you'll have access to all the material that gets added over time without any further action needed. So it's a very user-friendly experience, packed with value, especially since I'll be adding this crypto decoding blueprint very soon, as well as the new Trinity Masterclass shortly after that. And the link to my website is also in the pinned comment below. But let's wrap up the decode for today and then move into the charts to share the setup for the rest of this week, moving into this full moon time frame. And since this is the first full moon of this eclipse time frame since the recent solar eclipse and mercury is still stationed retrograde until april 25th i expect this full moon to be very dramatic and volatile for the markets we had the recent total solar eclipse in aries mercury retrograde in aries and in sidereal astrology the sun is in the sign of aries until around may 14th again aries ruled by mars the god of war so lots of fiery energy, lots of conflict. And we have this full moon coming up in Scorpio, and the full moon lands on a Wednesday, as you can see right there. This is powerful because Wednesday, Miércoles, it's the day of Mercury, the god of fiat money, money created out of thin air, which is also what cryptocurrency is. So expect the energy in the market around this date to be dramatic and swift, fast moves, and don't be shocked if there's another big liquidation ritual like there just was this past Saturday. And since I mentioned moments ago to expect conflict around this particular full moon, I have a date for you to all watch out for, and it's coming very soon. And that's April 20th. So let me load that up. And I know, 420, but I'm not talking about Mary Jane. <laughs> the reason behind the significance of this date is the date numerology. So we have my favorite double-digit date numerology. This is a little bit more esoteric, but this is my favorite form of date numerology, specifically when it comes to world events and stuff happening in markets. But this 68 is the war code. If we go back to the day of the Russia-Ukraine invasion, which was February 24th, 2022 again you have another 24 that's key but you can see the date numerologies are the same 68 and 14 but i want you to keep 68 in mind because world war ii started on september 1st in 1939 in the year of the rabbit remember last year where the war started in israel that was the year of the rabbit then this war developed world war ii into the year of the dragon we're currently in the year of the dragon, and this is the time frame I keep bringing up a lot. Well, we also have a 68 date numerology. So the Russia-Ukraine invasion happened on a 68, and World War II happened on a 68. But I'm not done yet. We have World War I, July 28th of 1914. 68 date numerology for World War I. And it's the same exact date numerology as World War II between these two dates. It was a 6832. Even the Vietnam War that started on November 1st of 1955, it's going to have the same code. 68, the mirror is 86. The Yom Kippur War with Israel and Palestine was on October 6th. Let me show you this. Of 1973. Now, this is a little bit more esoteric, but follow along. October is not the 10th month. Just like an octagon has eight sides, the prefix oct stands for eight. This date, written internationally, would be 6-8. 68, the war code. And notice how this date happens to be on the 86 days left in the year in the Gregorian system. You can't make this up. So remember how last year the war declared by Israel happened on the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War? Well, that was October 7th, and this was the same day in 2001 that the USA invaded Afghanistan after 9-11. And let's pull up the 9-11 date. We have 9-11-2001. What's fascinating about 9-11 
is that it's a 14 date numerology and i was just talking about april 20th this year to look out for 2024 and we share that 14 date numerology also the russia ukraine invasion was on a 14 standard date numerology the key thing to point out here is that september 11 2001 ends or has 111 days left in the year and this year april 20th is the 111th day of the year which only happens during leap years, which we're in now. And the most mind-blowing part about all of this, at least in my opinion, is that it will be exactly 22 years, 222 days since 9-11. This is big, and I don't say this lightly. lightly. This 222 code is no joke. If you take between 9-11 and when C-19 was declared a pandemic in 2020 during March 11th, it was exactly 222 months. As I said, the 222 code is no joke. So the fact that we have this upcoming April 20th of 2024 being 22 years, 222 days since 9-11, you have to keep that in mind. And this full moon that follows on the 24th that I brought up, it's also connected to the C-19 date of March 11, 2020 by four years and 44 days. That 444 code, some of you might remember Jay-Z's last album, 444, that was him giving you the sauce. Jay-Z, or Z, Lightning Bolt, Jehovah, that's Jupiter, Jehovah, the god of this age, Jupiter. And this is the day leading into the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus when we're talking about the 20th, going back to that. So we have this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. It's very important. This is some serious alpha and omega symbolism coming out of all of this. And just to bring this, this to your awareness, if you're new to astrology, the last time we had this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus was back in 1941 during World War II. And right on this date, when this specific alignment happened, around May 9th, 1941, if I go back to the dates here, going to 1941 in May. Within 24 hours, there was a bombing in London and the British bombed Hamburg, Germany in retaliation. This happened on May 10th, literally the day after. And just like the war in Israel started exactly the day after the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, and just like this fire at the Copenhagen Stock Exchange tied to the Notre Dame fire was exactly one day after the the 50 year anniversary, and we had this war starting in Israel on October 7th last year. It happened on a Saturday. The drone strike from Israel or from Iran to Israel was this past Saturday, and this upcoming April 20th that I'm decoding is on a Saturday, which also shares the same date numerology as all the past war dates that I just exposed. And we have this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction within 24 hours of this particular day. And the last time we had this exact alignment, astrologically, within 24 hours was a major development in World War II with a bombing in the UK and Germany. Now, please know I am not trying to spread fear here. These are just the facts. This is the data, and I'm here presenting you the data. We're in the early stages of what is likely to become World War III, and this upcoming Saturday is overflowing with esoteric code that points towards one direction, and that's war. I expect a conflict or a false flag. So likely this will happen not between the UK and Germany, but between Israel and Iran or Israel and some other nation, perhaps their retaliation for what just happened this past weekend, who knows? And coincidentally, this might be the same day as the Bitcoin block rewards having. Um, And if you look into the code of this, this having will take place when the network reaches 84,000 block height. That's so powerful because this key number of 84 is in there. And why is that important? Well, it's been 84 years since the start of World War II. (laughs) And here we are. It's also been 84 years since the Copenhagen uh, event in World War II, when Copenhagen was invaded and their historic stock exchange building 
ritualized in a fire. Here we have the Bitcoin having happening on this exact time frame. So of course, with cryptocurrency and blockchain technology becoming a new financial system, this is clearly symbolic out with the old burning down the stock exchange in with the new. The fact that this is all synchronized on the same dates is proving that. Now, let's move over to the Bitcoin charts and see what all of this means for Bitcoin and the crypto market. We want to actually take some time to go back and explore the halving and its effect on the market. And I know some people are like non-believers of all of this, and I really don't care at this point because it's all about the data anyways, regardless if it's the halving or if a full moon. It doesn't, what's the data showing us is actually what matters here. But when we go back to the last halving in May of 2020, right over here. You can see this little dip we had into the date of the halving, about three trading days, four total trading days of red, around 15 to 20 percent correction depending on how you measure it, but the day before the halving was a candle close of eight percent to the downside. So great buying opportunity because when I zoom out you can see that was the lowest we went for the rest of the entire cycle and it's the lowest we've went since. I'm not telling you to buy the halving, but that's looking pretty promising. And I'm going to show you some other things that kind of align with all of that. Okay, so we're going back to the halving before this in July of 2016. We pumped into the halving a couple weeks before and followed by a nasty correction and an even deeper correction after the halving. This was about a 15% correction right here, um, considering the week leading into the halving. So take note of this bigger correction that came after the halving because that seemed very black swan like that was a liquidation ritual clearly when you look at the following day we got bought back up the size of this tail and the trajectory of the recovery so this was maybe not something i'd be anticipating this time around but this 15 percent correction identical to the one that happened in our last halving now, it's important we revisit something that I shared here on this channel months ago, which is the way Bitcoin behaves around a halving, that it's typically sideways for a couple months around a halving before a true breakout. And when we go back to the first halving in November of 2012, you can see that we had about 40 or so days until we started breaking out again compared to our prior microcycle highs. All of the trading around the having post having had very little volatility with almost a month straight of candles that only moved about a half a percent per day. So that's significant. And it took about two months or so, month, a little bit over a month, we'll call it 40 days for the breakout to continue. Now let's go over to 2016 and see the effect that the halving had on Bitcoin. And you can see we were sideways for a lot longer from the halving date to when we started to really break out. It was around the 140, 150 day mark. That's big. This was a pretty long amount of time to be caught up in this accumulation range, but it was a great buying opportunity when you zoom out, you can see. Let's go to this last halving. And we're going to see something very similar from the actual halving date to it breaking out. It took about 80 days. But to be fair, we actually took a lot longer than that to start truly breaking out. I would call it about 160 days because after this moment right here, we started going parabolic. So here we are today. Bitcoin is correcting into the halving. It's actually the same. The way it looks is very similar as well. And if we were to take about 40 days after the halving, that brings you to somewhere in late May. And if you were to take about 80 days after the halving, that would bring you sometime into July, around the July new moon. That would align with what happened during the last halving as well. Now, I want you to consider that July is typically a very bullish month during a presidential election year, which we're in. And esoterically, it's the same during the year of the dragon, which we're in now. Typically, July and August are very bullish during this particular year. So this lines up with what Bitcoin has done in the past iterations of around a block rewards having, as well as the month by month uh, gains or losses we have in the traditional markets. It's all aligning. Now, I've mentioned this many times that we tend to see the traditional markets having a poor performance during April and May. And here we are and the market's doing just that. Typically, May goes lower than April. So this points to the corrective phase being over 
by the month of May or during the month of May. And with a couple weeks left in this month of April, that makes sense. Also, during the 2016 halving, we had an even bigger correction exactly 24 days after the halving. So if I was to take 24 days after the halving, you would see this puts us in the month of May. So coincidence or not? So note that during the first ever halving and the last halving, the lowest the Bitcoin price went for the remain remainder of the cycle was actually the halving day itself. So what that means, to summarize this, between now and then, the next couple days, as we continue to correct into this Bitcoin halving, it could be a very lucrative time to DCA into position, but of course, never go all in, keep some dry powder on the sidelines, and wait for confirmations. We've already started to see some very telling confirmations of what's going on from a technical perspective, one of which being this cross right here of this eight moving average below the 55. I call this the wolf cross. And when we have the eight going below the 55, that's a downside implied. The last time we had this was over here in late January, mid late January. And that followed by a 10% correction following the cross. So if we added this all up today, that would be like around 57,000 for this full moon. And uh, I already shared recently that I feel that we'll be at 58K on the exact day of the halving. Uh, but I was just having a little fun with that. We'll see how that goes. But regardless, I am accumulating as we speak, focused on altcoins since we have yet to truly break out into price discovery. And that's where the big opportunity is when Bitcoin is behaving like this. I've said this many times. We are not in an alt season right now. So what I mean by that is Bitcoin is actually doing what it's always doing around this particular time, regardless of the narratives. And with the way it's trading lately, it's becoming obvious. It's been 50 days since Bitcoin has started trading back into the 50 to 70, sorry, the 60 to 70 K range, and it's unable to expand. And with no daily closes holding above the 70 K territory, only a couple and these sharp rejections over and over again, if we were to get a daily close below 62 K, that would prove how weak this whole breakout was how narrative driven it was, which is not safe. So when you combine that with the fact that total two and total three have been draining over the past couple days, that's not a sign of strength. That's not alt season vibes. Alt season is when we're already in price discovery with the alts, not just some isolated alts, but actually going into the total market cap, removing Bitcoin, or if you'd like with total three, removing ETH and Bitcoin. So if I was to show you really quickly the fibs here on total three, I think this is really important. We're going to remove these moving averages and just show you what's up. We're at the same phase that we were over here back in December, late December, around Christmas time of 2020. So we have a fib pull from the swing high to the swing low in the cycle. We have the same thing over here. And you could see this interaction with the golden pocket. When we first enter it, we get some trading time about a month rejected and then we start to break below it and this is the lowest we go before we go absolutely parabolic so we're in the same phase right now we made it into the golden pocket for the first time started to break below we're starting to get some back tests even on the 0.5 fib this is the time to dca so i'm not saying that it will go exactly the same as it did last time because there's astrology to consider of course but that's why you're here on this channel to get the esoteric take on these markets but what is very similar is the technical setup with where we're at now in December 2020. So we're truly in the buy the dip phase, and there is no denying that we're still in a bull run, of course. So don't get confused with what I'm saying right now. I'm not saying that we're going to have a market crash or enter a bear market. I'm not bearish at all. I am neutral in all of this, and I'm not letting my emotions get in the way. It's the emotions that are wrecking retail investors right now. So many new investors FOMO'd into these markets last month when altcoin charts had 90 RSI. Retail was FOMOing into Pepe coin when it had 92 RSI in the daily, and now it's down 50% from their entry. Most have probably panic sold this dip already because they have no plan, no strategy, and making all their decisions purely off of emotion. So like I always say, don't be a bull, don't be a bear, be a wolf, follow the moon. We've almost made it through eclipse season. We still have this full moon coming up very soon. We're getting our buying opportunities now. And 
We can feel more confident in our entries because the market has cooled off. Momentum has reset for the most part. And although we still have opportunity to further continuation to the downside, it does not mean to get fearful or worried. Here, we buy the fear. As I say, buy the blood or buy the boredom. Never buy the hype. I don't care how many Bitcoin ETF inflow charts people want to send to me. It does not matter for my investment thesis. You de-risk on the way up and prepare yourself for a correction when the markets become overheated. You'll never sell an absolute top and you'll likely never buy the absolute bottom. But that doesn't matter. As long as you're staying profitable, that's what matters. As long as you're taking action opposite of the herd, that's really what matters. So we're going to wrap up today's video with just a quick check-in on XRP. Because it's taken a serious tumble lately and a lot of people are wondering what's going on here. And I have this chart showing this dotted blue line over here on XRP. And this is about as low as we tend to get on dramatic downside moves. You can see this, this downside, uh, or sorry, this dotted line. It's showing you the C19 crash after this case with the R Ripple and the SEC right there in late December back test. Here was your alt season that XRP really didn't take part in because of this lawsuit. Then at the end of our cycle into the altcoin bear market, we tested this dotted line. We kept testing it, we kept testing it, and recently we have tested it again. This seems to be as low as XRP likes to go over the past four years. So will this time be different and XRP starts breaking lower than this? Or is this the best opportunity to get heavily discounted XRP before the alt season really starts? I'm leaning more on that. And it's not because I'm a big XRP holder. It's because I'm a technical analyst and I'm seeing the trend in XRP that it really likes this particular trend line. It's holding structure for the most part. It still has this lawsuit. It's likely that once this is over, Lots of whales will speculate on it. That will bring in retail FOMO, and then we know what happens. So what we're doing right now is really coiling up. We're building a lot of structure. And if I just remove all the noise and show you what's happening, we are in a trend reversal as we speak because we've continued to get higher lows and effectively higher highs. Right now, we're just trapped in this range between the 50 cent and 70 cent once we break out of there, it's likely that we will start to enter back testing these prior highs of alt season 2021. But I've said this many, many times. Typically, we need a Bitcoin price discovery for XRP to do well. It was the same case over here. We had the case starting the lawsuit between SEC and Ripple. And then when Bitcoin started breaking out, heading into 60K, XRP still pulled off a 1,000% move in the beginning phase of the lawsuit. So imagine this was over and also Bitcoin was trading into 80, 90, maybe 100,000. That's when we would start to see the three, five, seven dollar XRP. But for now, we still have lots of weakness in the crypto market because it's tethered to the stock market. We've had a big rejection in the traditional markets. You can see it clearly here on the S&P. If I pull up the Dow Jones, this is obvious. It's looking like a blow off top, all right? This is not strength. And we have an FOMC meeting coming up at the very beginning of May. Between now and the rest of May, that's really your big correction time for the traditional markets cyclically. So we wanna be taking action over this time frame. We've been talking about for a while now, here we are. We only got a couple of days of new Bitcoin all-time high, but it's nothing to throw, throw a party over. Look at what the market's doing. Zoom out. Don't get emotional about this. So I'm going to wrap up this video here today. Probably my best video I've ever released regarding all the data that we've covered. Everything pretty much was covered today. And this key ritual that happened in Copenhagen is big. The fact that it was a stock market building on fire... And we're moving into this Bitcoin halving at the same exact time frame this Saturday, 68 date numerology tied to this Uranus Jupiter conjunction in Taurus, Taurus the bull. When this stock exchange was built, finally was in the year of the ox, year of the bull. Keep this stuff in mind, family. So I'm going to wrap this up here. I appreciate and I'm grateful for every single one of you. And I'll be catching some of you on the next Red Pill podcast over on Patreon. Much love.